We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other. One. Blast off. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, are my two best friends and co-hosts, Mike Bonney and Michael LaPlante. What's going on, fellas? Same shit, different day. It's going well. You can find all our fantasy football content at fantasy6pack.net. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fantasy Six Pack, where you can find this podcast and many other great podcasts. What we're going to run through today is, at the top of the show, we're going to run through a game recap of the Cincinnati Bengals against the Browns last night at Thursday Night Football. And then we're going to get in our week two previews. You ready to get started, gentlemen? Yes, sir. You betcha. And in the game last night, Thursday night football, the Browns edged out the Bengals 35-30. I mean, it really wasn't that close as the score shows because the Bengals got a garbage-type touchdown. To my man, Tyler Boyd. Yeah, it helped. Did you almost call him Toilet Boyd? (laughs) It (laughs) It was playing like a toilet. But uh, the top fantasy scorers, top five fantasy scorers from last night was – Nick Chubb, he had 22 carries for 124 yards, two rushing touchdowns for 26 fantasy points. Hey, don't Man. forget about his one reception for nine yards. <laughs> Man, wasn't it good to see him uh, do some work last night, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it was finally nice to see him in a positive game script where he was used in the correct way. But I think everybody knew this was going to happen, yeah? Bad Bengals defense, Chubb's just going to run all over him. Yeah, this was expected. Yeah, definitely. And then his uh, uh, the next leading scorer was Joe Burrow. He ended up for throwing the ball <laughs> sixty-one times, guys. He, he can, ended up. He uh, actually broke a record for most completions for a rookie at thirty-seven, too. Yeah, he ended up throwing for three hundred and sixteen yards, three passing touchdowns. Uh, he also <laughs> ran the ball seven times for nineteen yards and ended with twenty four fantasy points. It's weird and how I, much he uh, targeted the tight ends. I know it. I know it. It 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 was definitely in their game plan to do it, and then unfortunately, Ozuma got ended up like almost car- even uh, their the backup at the, got seven plus targets. Yeah, yeah. Joe Burrow really likes to target the tight ends. Yeah. And he, uh, that that offensive line looked real troublesome last night for them. I Burrow, agree. Burrow was getting hit up pretty good. I think they said at one point late in the fourth quarter he had got hit nine times or something. It's pretty brutal. Um, your third highest fantasy scorer was Kareem Hunt, and the second string running back killed that <laughs> Bengals defense, guys. I was a little carries. worried in the first half with him. <clears throat> Yeah. Didn't look like he was doing much, but they put him in as the closer, and it was just a wrap. Yeah. He I... had t- 10 carries, 86 <clears throat> yards, a rushing touchdown, two receptions, and a, a touchdown through the air as well. What were you going to say, Michael Plant? I think that, you know, they just ran Chubb so much in the first half and the third quarter. They were like, all right, Kareem Hunt, you know, go ahead and close this game. It should be. Yeah, right. Match. Yeah, definitely. Um, the fourth leading scorer, scorer was Tyler Boyd. He had a little bit of a, a slow start as well, but he ended up finishing with seven receptions for 72 yards and a touchdown as the garbage-type touchdown. Could have ended up with two. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he dropped one earlier. Yeah, definitely dropped one. Yeah, he was upset about it, smacking the ground and stuff. <laughs> At least he's got passion. Yeah. And then the last guy we're going to talk about was Odell, man. Finally. Yeah, he finally broke out a little bit. 17 fantasy points, had four receptions for 74 yards. Still didn't hit the 100 yards, though, which it's been a while, long time since he's hit 100 yards receiving. It was still (laughs) nice to see him hit the end zone, though. He hadn't done that in a while. Yep. 
yeah, it was good to also good to see that him and Baker had at least some sort of connection last night. Like, but I, I'm going to say this now. I don't think that happens if Nick Chubb doesn't get going. I because it's all off that play action. It was that that touchdown was off a play action pass, and ODB just burned the corner with a double move. Mm-hmm. That's it for that. Let's jump right into our the game previews. Let's jump in with the uh, Jaguars and the Titans. Titans are favored by seven and a half. Let's start out with Gardner Minshew. How do you guys? Uh, how do you see his matchup turning out? It's a tough one for him. I mean, but the Titans are susceptible to the pass. Uh, they have a Dory Jackson that's injured, and I mean, look what Drew Locke did. I mean, he even had a decent fantasy game against them. I think yep. this might be a rough time for Gardner. He probably won't be able to get the rushing game going against that Titan defense, so it's going to rely on this passing. I don't know. It, it might be tough this time around. I, I will say this. This game, he's, he's going to miss more than one pass. He ain't going to have one incompletion all game. I would probably avoid starting him. If, if you are thinking about it, I probably wouldn't do it. Not this matchup. Not even after that week one, I still want to start him. If, yeah, yeah. If you're in any other league bigger than a ten or twelve league, there's. Uh, I mean, I would start super flex for sure. But yeah. if you're in a ten or twelve, there's some better uh, options out there this week. Yeah. But uh, moving on to running backs, James Robinson. He had a good first week. Uh, he saw, I think, all the carries, but he only he ended up with twelve carries for sixty something yards, I believe. And then uh, Chris Thompson. Didn't, wasn't really part of the game plan. Which surprised me. Yeah, how do you guys see this backfield shaking out moving forward? Well, I think it was a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, the Jags actually were in that game. They were not expected to be in that game. And the, Chris Thompson's whole you know thing is pass catching. And the only way he's going to get that is if you're in a negative game script. I mean, and they kept it competitive all game, so they really didn't need to use him. Yeah, no doubt. Um, all right, but... Before- before uh, we jump into this next game, I'm gonna hand it over to the Plant. He's gonna he's gonna lead this uh, these next few games for us. All right, guys, we got the LA Rams at Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are uh, minus one on that one. Let's jump in right into the LA Rams quarterback Jared Goff. You think he's uh, QB one range this week? I am not starting him as a quarterback one, guys. Uh, tough matchup versus the Eagles secondary. You know, they uh, Eagles secondary struggled in years past, but adding Darius Slay, uh, they added another cornerback. I'm blanking on their name, but tough start for Jared Goff this week. You agree, Ike? Uh, if you have nobody else, I would honestly think about playing him. And Superflex, I would honestly play him too. I don't think the Eagles yeah, secondary yeah. is that great except for Darius Slay. The safeties are a little old and slow, so I think I think someone can beat them deep. I'm sure Higby and Robert Woods and Cooper Cup are going to be able to do well against them. Dare Slay can only stop can only stop one guy. You're not wrong. Uh, I, it's kind of a flip of a coin for me. Uh, the Eagles are really good at stopping the run, so I don't see Sean McVay being able to deploy his you know running scheme on them, which kind of leaves Jared Goff to throw the ball. So he's going to have the volume. It's whether yeah, that is interesting. That's it. true. But moving on to the running backs, how you guys feel about Malcolm Brown? He kind of came out and showed out on uh, Sunday, uh, or yeah, Sunday night. You think it's his job to lose? All right, I got the uh, I got the Eagles, I got the Eagles winning. Uh, I do think they're gonna cover. It's only minus one. Uh, what do you guys think? I got Rams twenty three twenty. I got Rams twenty to seventeen. All right, sounds good. On to the next game. We got the uh, San Francisco 49ers at the uh, New York Jets. And the 49ers are minus seven. Uh, that seems reasonable. Oh, yeah, for sure. But They're going to be running it down their throats, I feel like. Oh, they're upset after that last week loss to the Cardinals. But uh, jumping into uh, the quarterback for the Niners, are we scared of uh, Jimmy G this week? Or do you think he has a bounce back week? I yeah. just... Go ahead, Ike. I just don't think he's going to throw that much. Yeah, with his pass, ca- all his pass catching options gone. Debo's gone. George Kittle's sitting out this week. Wow. Ayuk is banged up. 
He's banged yeah, up, but he's supposed to start this week. Still, a rookie that's banged up with no, not much practice in the past few weeks, man, that's going to be tough for him to adjust you know, to any of that. And it sucks because you might have drafted Jimmy in your draft because you saw this matchup coming in week two. Yeah. With the Jets, it would have been a good matchup, but I don't. I if you're desperate, he's not a bad quarterback stream, but I'd stay away if you can. Man, if he had Kittle, it'd be so much better. Yeah, if they had Kittle uh, in this game, it'd, they'd be more prone to passing it. But with Kittle out, I think they're just going to run it down their throats like the uh, Titans want to do the Jags this week. But uh, since we're talking about running it down their throats, let's talk about Raheem Mostert and uh, Tevin Coleman. Do you guys think this is a split backfield, or do you think it's Raheem's job? I think it's... It's, I think it's split between the three guys, actually. I think uh, McKinnon will get the pass catch to work. Raheem Mostert kind of saved his week last week with the one uh, long reception that he had. Yeah, that was a, a big play that took up more than half of his yards. The guy I don't really want in the backfield. I don't want Tevin Coleman. He's the odd man out. No. Play. Yeah. I'd start Mostert. Start most start probably bench Tevin Coleman and Jarek McKinnon unless you're desperate. McKinnon could be a decent flex if uh, if he doesn't have many pass catching options. McKinnon can definitely be that guy. Good I call. just yeah, good call, Mike. You're you're not wrong. I just don't see it with them being in a positive game script, needing to pass the ball, and if they're running the ball, it's probably going to be most start handling it. Fair. But uh, moving on to the wide receivers that they barely <laughs> they barely have. We got Kendrick Bourne, the recently signed Muhammad Sanu, and banged up Brandon Ayuk. I would just avoid them. Don't even yep. worry about it. Yep, save me the trouble. Just avoid all three of them. How about you, Dell? I agree. All right, that was quick. All right, on the tight end, like we stated previously, George Kittle is not playing this week. Uh, that leaves Jordan Reed, the backup. You think he's going to be startable this week? Nope. If you. He- Ooh, wait, I, I would I, wait a week to see what he does. <laughs> I, I was gonna say if you if you don't like any of the other options on free agency and you had George Kittle, why not? No, I would rather do Chris Herndon or something like that. Uh, He's probably out there for sure. Ah, man, I, I who knows what it, Reed's got concussion problems. Who knows? Uh, somebody's got to catch the passes, dog. Someone's got to do it. Jarek McKinnon. Some- he can't catch all 20, 15, 20 passes <laughs> they throw, my man. <laughs> You're not, you guys aren't wrong. Somebody does have to catch the ball. but yeah, I would be so scared to play Jordan Reed. I'm sure you guys can find somebody better. There's, you, you're right. There's Chris Herndon out there in a better matchup. But if he's if he's gone, Jordan Reed is worth a look. But that's, that's probably it. I, unless you're desperate, I'd stay away from the tight ends as well. But moving on to the Jets. Can you, we just lump the whole Jets team in together and say that <laughs> avoid everything? Quarterback, running back, wide receiver, you could all avoid except for Chris Herndon. Herndon it could be the streaming tight end you guys want this week. Yep. And Perriman, if you're really, really, really desperate, you could play him because he's the only receiver really there is. All right, yeah. did we get did we get confirmation that Jamison Crowder's not playing this weekend? He correct, he is out. Yep. Yeah, Herndon's the only one worth playing in this, and I'd still be scared. So yeah, think, so let's just avoid all that. Yeah, I, I think Please, guys, avoid the playing. Jets. <laughs> I, and then I'm taking the 49ers to cover this. Yeah, seven. for sure. They probably win 35 to 10. Yeah, Vegas, Vegas, Vegas is going to make money if anybody's betting on the Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. All right, on to the next game. That was great, man. <laughs> not, e- not even a chuckle, huh? Fuck me. <laughs> Maybe that it'd be was funnier. Fun- Maybe it'd be funnier if you had the butt fumble from Mark Sanchez in there. <laughs> <laughs> but on to the next game. We got the Buffalo Bills at the Miami Dolphins. The Bills are favored by five and a half points. And we got the uh, the very entertaining Josh Allen leading the <laughs> Bills into Miami. My man. See uh lock in for this week? Absolutely. You aren't Can't afraid even of him. hit a medium pass, but sure, start him, I guess. You're not afraid of him fumbling too many times again? No, man. His rushing floor is fantastic. And right. he'll make he'll make enough plays with his arm to make it uh, to be a quarterback one this week. I have to agree yeah. with that. Yep. 
but still, man, he needs to work on his throwing. Yeah, he needs a little bit of work, but we're we're gonna start him this week. He's he missed he's a nice ball. touchdown to John Brown. But that's that's all we need to know about Josh Allen. He's a lock yep. in this week. On to the running backs. Uh we got Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. Uh this, the carries were split down down the middle last week. Do you want to start any of them or both of them? I would like to avoid both of them. Until you see what what until it's more known what they're doing, like what one's gonna be the more passing catching back, what one's gonna do more of the goal line stuff, but we don't really know that yet. Well, the one thing I, I, I will say is I know Zach Moss is going to get the red zone carries, it looks like. But what were you going to say, Del? Maybe. I'd lean towards Zach Moss. I said it on uh, the Fantasy Six Pack Hour last night, but Zach Moss getting his red, getting the red zone touches, I think that's who – I think he, blah, blah, blah. I think he'll definitely get the red zone touches like Michael Platt just said. And he caught the receiving touchdown, so – That's still only one week, though. If in that case – J.K. Dobbins is going to get all the goal line stuff and Mark Ingram won't get anything. You're, you're talking about a weird, weird game with the, the Ravens last week. They're, 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 I, not gonna get, they're not going to just totally get rid of Devin Singletary. I still Mark. I would still don't like both of them necessarily to start as you're running back one or two, though. Yeah, it's yeah, murky. No, I, I agree Flex. Like but they've been saying since training camp. Yeah, they like Zach. Zach. Boss was going to get oh, yeah. those touches. So. My... My one concern is I just think Devin Singletary is just one fumble away from Zach Moss taking this backfield over because Zach Moss has the talent to do it. But, uh, I mean, so real quick, you guys, uh, which one are you starting this week, if any? Neither. Neither? For you, Mike? How about you, Dill? I don't want either. Either? I, uh, I'm i going to stick with you guys on this one. I'm going to go neither. On to the wide receivers. Uh he, he had a good showing out last week, uh, Stefan Diggs. And uh, we got the banged-up John Brown. I don't think he's going to be playing this week, which means uh, Cole Beasley could see some more uh, volume this week. What do, what do you guys think about these receivers? Uh, Diggs is a borderline wide receiver three, I guess. Probably, I'd like the, a flex play because he's probably, Yeah, man, he's, he's sketchy. Gonna, he's going to draw Byron Jones, I believe, right? And then... Yeah, I believe Byron Jones is a shadow cornerback, so he's going to have him all game. And then Xavier Howard usually plays the slot, right? So he'll either be matched up with, well, if he's in the slot, he's going to be matched up with Cole Beasley. Might be a good matchup for Dolphins. Corners, at least. Yeah. Uh... I, you got to start Stephon Diggs because you, you drafted him somewhat early, I feel like. so. He's, he's just got too much upside. He's one of those players that can take one to the yeah. house on uh, at the very least, a wide receiver three for him. If you're desperate, wide receiver two. But Cole Beasley, uh, maybe flex, but that'd be it. But uh, on to uh, what I think who could be a decent streamer this week, Dawson Knox. What do you guys think about him? I don't think a whole lot about him. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. But, but you just said you said hey, somebody, somebody's hey, got to catch the ball, right? I mean, if, if Byron Jones locking down Stephon Diggs and Xavier Howard's locking down Cole Beasley, who's going to catch the ball for the Bills? The problem is Dawson Knox doesn't always catch the ball when it gets thrown at him. <laughs> his, his, his hands aren't the greatest, but what do you, I mean, you said the, you think he's a streaming option, Mike. Let's uh, explain. You get give, give us like 20 seconds on it. Uh, can you name a starting linebacker for the Miami Dolphins that isn't named Kyle Van Noy? No. Nope. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I I see the safeties or the linebackers covering the tight ends in this, and uh, I, I can't name a safety for the Dolphins either. So right, I, move, I think, yep, moving on. <laughs> Touche. Quarterback for the Dolphins, Ryan Fitzmagic. We Stay start. Away. That's right, Fitzpatrick. <laughs> yeah, it's Fitzpatrick right now. He's got to earn back Fitzmagic. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong, but it's still fun to say. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd stay away from him unless you want to start him in a super flex. And then what a shit show of this running backs, man. Avoid it. Just avoid it, guys. I don't. I you can find people better. <laughs> I know there's Miles really Gaskin came out of nowhere. I know. Rita's really... like, hey, I'm. I'm not. I guess I'm not playing anymore <laughs> or something. Who knows? It's weird there. And Howard had the patented going out of the sideline injured look. <laughs> yep. Matt Breida's droppable, guys. He's droppable. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, it, if you drafted that Brita, you should probably. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily pick up Miles Gaskin either right now. No, I mean Jordan Howard's borderline droppable, <laughs> but I would uh, keep him around. A Weird few more man. Weeks. All right, yeah, it, I, it really is goofy. I th- I think that's enough on the Dolphins running backs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, don't very, <laughs> totally I don't see very enjoyable. I don't see very. I don't see very many positive game scripts where they're even going to be used correctly. So uh, on to the the more relevant position in this offense, considering they're going to be down most weeks. The wide receivers, Preston Williams, uh, he's going to he's looking like he's going to get number one uh, wide receiver duties this week with Devontae Parker uh, banged up. You think he can capitalize? No, <laughs> I'm a big Preston believer, but. This is really, not a good matchup for him. No, nah, really tough matchup. He's going to obviously draw Tredavious White, so uh, he he might get shut down a little bit. I like Mike Kosicki this week, guys. Yeah. For yeah. a bounce back week. Yeah, if he's lining up in the slot, I think Jacecki can take adva- advantage. I don't think he's going to have a great game, but he's probably going to be the most targeted one. Right. Uh, well, we got... Bills five and a half favorites. What do you guys think? Bills win twenty four fourteen. I'm just gonna say Bills win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna kick it back to you, Dylan. Right now, uh, you can take the next games. Cool, nice job, pal. Um, Thanks, man. Next game, guys, is Vikings versus the Colts. Colts are favored by three. Kirk Cousins, I. Uh, I talked about him last night on the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. He was my my sleeper pick this week. You know, Gardner Minshew tore up the Vikings, or sorry, Gardner Minshew tore up the Colts defense last week. I could see Kirky doing the same this week. What do you guys think? It's in the realm of possibility. I just it's hard to see with how how run heavy this offense is. Yeah. But if, they, if they get down, then they're then they're forced to throw it. So he's got the opportunity. I think it's going to be a more run-oriented game for both teams, probably. See you. So then, moving on to running backs, you like Delvin Cook a lot, Ike? I, yeah, I, I'd start I, him for sure. D- actually, go ahead. DFS wouldn't even be a bad option either. Twenty carries for sure, I can <laughs> see for him. Yeah, Delvin. Just Cook's depends a- on that Colts defense, man. They're actually not bad. DeForest Buckner helps a lot. Yeah, definitely. I actually had Cook as one of my busts on uh, Joe's podcast. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It, that matchup scares me a little bit. Like you said, DeForest Buckner there on the defensive line now. You know, Darius Leonard flying all over the field. Yeah, the James Col- Robinson did okay last week. Like, he didn't set the world on fire, but still yeah. got like the Colts, 60 plus yards. The Colts defense is going to be tough to run against this year, but with Dalvin Cook's skill set, he'll probably get most of his work through the passing game on little dump offs. Yep. Sure. Uh, moving on, wide receivers, Adam Thielen, Jeff. Justin Jefferson, B.C. Johnson. Obviously, uh, Adam Thielen's a must-start here. Agreed. Yeah, he, uh, he's the only one worth starting, in my opinion. Go on. Agreed. Adam Thielen, I think, is going to eat this week. You know, could see 10-plus uh, targets. So, Moving on to tight ends. Irv Smith Jr., Kyle Rudolph. Avoid them both, guys. I feel like one of them's going to catch a touchdown, but w- which I'm guessing one? what one is not fun. I, didn't pff, who knows? Didn't Irv Smith only see one target last week? That's disgusting. That's unfortunate. Yeah, for being down the whole game, that's not ideal. Yeah, guys, you can find better options. Stay away. Let's jump yep. to the let's jump to the Colts now. Philip Rivers, Aaron Rodgers tore the Vikings apart last week. You start Phil this week. If you got another option, I'd go with the other option. But Philip Rivers with the prime matchup wouldn't be a terrible streamer. How about you, Ike? Uh, I think he might do okay against the Vikings. Yeah, I think I think he has top fifteen upside. Um, but moving on to the running backs, guys. Obviously, I don't know if you if you haven't heard Marlon Mack done for the year. ACL, he's a, man. He, Oh no, no, Achilles. Achilles, yes, ruptured his Achilles. Um, this podcast has kind of been negative towards Jonathan Taylor, but guys, I think we need to change our our tune on him. I think he, uh, obviously, he's going to get an uptick 
uptick in targets, but a nice surprise was Naheem Hines. What do you guys think about this backfield moving forward? I think we got uh, ourselves a split backfield. I think we got one guy that's going to catch all the passes and one guy that's going to run it on first and second down, and that's Jonathan Taylor. What do you think, Ike? I think Hines is a good flex option this week. Agree. And then Jonathan Taylor is a Start RB. with full confidence. Yeah, RB2 moving forward. Moving on to wide receivers, T.Y. Hilton, Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman Jr. Guys, I'm stoked about Paris Campbell. He saw almost double-digit targets last week, and he played uh, almost all his snaps out of the slot. You know Phil Rivers loves his slot, his slot guys. Uh, what do you guys think about the other two receivers in the Colts? Wide receiver core, T.Y. Hilton, Michael Pittman Jr., are you starting either of them, guys? I'm obviously starting Paris Campbell this week. You probably can start T.Y. Hilton, but knowing Phillip Rivers, he's just going to target Paris Campbell on the slot and his running backs out, out of the backfield. I'd probably start T.Y. Hilton for sure. Paris Campbell, maybe flex Pittman, deep flex for sure. And then uh, – Moving to tight end, Jack Doyle, he's not playing this week, so that leaves Mo Alley Cox. What do you guys think? Streamable? Mo Alley, yes. no. Just because Philip Rivers likes the tight end. I would. You got better streaming options out there and Chris Herndon. For sure. Um, agreed. Um, I'm actually picking the Vikings to win this game, guys. Uh, 35 27. So, what do you guys think? It's a toss I'm up. I'm going Vikings. This is a toss up. I'm going to go against the green. I think the Colts win this one. They got the home field advantage, if you can call it that. All right. Moving on. Lions, Packers. Packers favored by six and a half. Matthew Stafford. Are you starting him this week, guys? Yes. Super flex for sure, but if you don't have another quarterback in your main league, you could probably start him. I think that uh, the Lions are going to be down all game, so Matthew Stafford's just going to be slinging it. No, you don't have Kenny Galladay, most likely. Maybe TJ Hawkinson goes off again. Agreed. Um, the running backs this week, Adrian Peterson saw him do some work against the Bears. DeAndre Swift saw us pass a game work while dropping a game-winning touchdown. Oof. I think right now this running back is just to stay away. You guys agree? Yep. Yeah, the only one worth starting maybe in a flex is Peterson. And then wide receivers, Mike already talked about it. Kenny Galladay is out this week. Marvin, He was out last week. Marvin Jones, everyone thought was going to be the great play, but he, he wasn't spectacular. Danny Amendola was okay. Um, you guys starting Marvin Jones with confidence this week? Not with confidence, but I'd start him. I'm starting him for sure. Nice. He's yeah, gonna, he's gonna Jair's going to be on him, though. Jair's not an easy matchup. I actually like the matchup for TJ Hawkinson. I think he's uh, yes. he's a good play this week. Uh, I think he definitely finishes as a tight end one. I agree. Can't say anything he, more. He's the red zone guy now with uh, Galladay being out. But uh, jump to the Packers. Aaron Rodgers' resurgence last week against the Vikings. Guys. Whoop, whoop. Can he keep it up against this line's defense? I didn't think he could do it with the Vikings, and I absolutely think he could do it with the Lions. Yeah, yeah I don't no. see why not. <laughs> yeah, Lions secondary. Start him. Bang, banged up and terrible, so I think that's all we need to say. Um, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, and A.J. Dillon in the backfield. Um, I you're obviously definitely starting Aaron Jones, especially yep. if they jump out to a big lead. They're definitely trying to grind it out on the ground. I'd avoid A.J. Dillon for now. If you're in deep leagues, Jamal Williams might get some work, but I would be scared to play him still. Aaron Jones is the only one worth starting in this backfield. And then uh, moving on to wide receivers, obviously Devontae Adams saw a ton of targets last week. Nice surprise week from MVS and Alan Lazard. Um, if you had to choose one of those two receivers, guys, who would you pick? Go ahead, Ike. 
I would probably go MBS because they drafted him somewhat early or somewhat in the early rounds, I believe, like second or third or something like that. So at least he has some talent. Yeah, he is. Lazard, big, was he undrafted? He has the big, big play upside. Yeah. Yeah, MVS is definitely the higher ceiling. And Lazard, I think, has the higher floor. I've been, In training camps, uh, Aaron Rodgers was just talking up Alan Lazard like he was his number two receiver. So I, I just feel like he's got the safer floor. But if you want the ceiling, it's MVS. Cool. And then we could pretty much skip over the tight end guys for the Packers. It's pretty useless. Um, Packers are favored by six and a half. I think they handle the Lions pretty easily. I think they win 31 21. I uh, I think the Packers win, but I also think the Lions cover. They always play the Packers tough for some reason. Yeah. Uh, uh, they could probably cover this one. Okay. Jumping into the next game, guys. Probably going to be my favorite game to watch. I think it might be the purposes. game of the week. Is uh, Falcons, Cowboys, Cowboys favored by four. Another shootout. Yeah, definitely going to be a shootout, guys. Uh, Matt Ryan... Definitely a start. Mm-hmm. Same um, with Todd. Yeah. Matt Ryan could be quarterback one this week. Todd Gurley. Uh, the whole, to me, the whole Falcons offense is a must start. Besides, yep. unfortunately, Hayden Hurst kind of let down a lot of fantasy owners last week. Do you guys think he bounces back? Yes. This this is his week to bounce back. So does that mean Russell Gage is going to take, uh, kind of take Significantly less targets, probably, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have even have uh, picked up Russell Gage to begin with because there's just one week in a shootout. So I, Hurst is probably gonna get most of those targets that he got last week. It, they it, just lost Len Vanderesh too, so that's not helpful for the Cowboys. Way to steal my thunder. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Cowboys defense is gonna struggle. Um, but I think we could jump to the Cowboys then. Um, Dak Prescott, obviously a start. You saw Mr. Unlimited, Russell Wilson, cook against this Falcons defense. That's just atrocious. So Dak, Dak should do the same thing. You guys agree? Yeah, I see this game being a high-scoring game, which means Dak's going to have to keep up with the Falcons. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, start him. You, think Zeke, you guys think Zeke kills it too? Yep. If he's using the passing game like he was last week, yes, absolutely. And then what uh what wide receivers would you guys target out of the three Amari Cooper Mike? I would start Steve. off three. Yeah. Uh Amari Cooper surprised me against Jalen Ramsey last week. Michael Gallup was one bad call away from making a good week, and C D Lamb came out and showed that he can ball. So if this is a shootout, all three have fantasy value. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. And then uh moving on to the tight end, a guy who a decent amount of people were high on uh, Blake Jarwin. Goes down with a torn ACL, done for the year. Dalton Schultz came in, saw some targets, but didn't really do anything with him. Are you guys avoiding the tight end now in Dallas? Yeah, until he shows he gets consistent targets, which might be hard for that in that offense. I don't think this guy's any good. <laughs> Easy. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, he's probably better than you. <laughs> You're not wrong there. <laughs> But I could probably catch the ball as, as well as he did. He dropped a few passes when he had the opportunity. I don't know if it was the limelight. Maybe he bounces back this week. But uh, for now, I'd stay away from him. Agreed. Um, Cowboys are favored by four guys. I think I see this one ending in a push. Cowboys win 35-31. I think the Cowboys win too. Close game. Yeah. Uh, I don't, the Cowboys need to win this game, but I think the Falcons win it. Interesting, man. They both need one. All right, let's. But jump both to the, can't. Let's jump to the next. <laughs> let's jump to the next game, guys. Um, the New York Football Giants traveling to Chicago Bears, favored by five and a half. Danny Dimes. Avoid him. Ooh. He didn't Let's show you see. enough against that Pittsburgh defense Monday, Ike. No, Cleo Max. Hopefully, gonna be all over him, but you never know. I mean. I, I feel like you can find someone better. There, yeah, you can definitely find a better matchup out there. The Bears defense isn't the same Bears defense that we're, we were all afraid of a couple right. of years ago, but it can still, like, 
the Bears at home just are so much better of a team. So I would I would stay away from Daniel Jones, but and Daniel Jones just isn't that good. He can't can't hang out on the ball that much. I it, yeah, he may turn the ball over a few times against this Bears defense. But uh, I actually, who I think is going to be the star of this game would be Saquon Barkley. I, yeah, I think he bounces back after that. No Eddie uh, Goldman. Yep, Adrian Peterson tore apart the Bears on the ground last mm. week. Sa- Saquon's going to do the same. It's it scares the hell out of me. Yeah, if an old Adrian Peterson can average over five yards a carry against the Bears defense, I can only imagine what Saquon's going to do. But uh, moving on to the wide receivers, Golden Tate dealing with hamstring issues. Darius Slayton balled out on Monday. And then Sterling Shepard, obviously. Um, my pick this week out of the, the three wide receivers, guys, is Sterling Shepard. Especially if Golden Tate's out, Shepard will be in the slot, lined up against Buster Screen. Not a fan of Buster Screen. So Ster- Sterling Shepard should torch him. What do you guys think about Slayton? I think if you have a horseshoe up your ass, play him because he is all luck. He he has 10 total career touchdowns, and he only has four games with touchdowns. So that's pretty sporadic. Who you start, Nike, out of the three? Honestly, I don't want to start any of them, but if I have to – Probably Slayton because he gets the most targets, it seems like. Sure. Uh, I like Evan Ingram more, obviously, than all three of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, Guys, I don't like Evan Ingram. I watched him on Monday repeatedly. He, at least I know, had two drops. Why do his hands suck so bad? I understand he gets fed a lot of targets, but uh, to me, he's – very inefficient and doesn't do well with the targets. It's very frustrating to me. Is it all him or is it a little bit of Danny Dimes too? I don't know. See, I think it could be a little bit of both. I don't think Danny Dimes is accurate very much at all. And I think Evan Ingram struggles with drops. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, it's, it's still, uh, if, if you drafted him, you obviously want to start him. So I, I would, I would, I would throw him in your lineup. Look what TJ Hawkinson did to the Bears last week. Yeah, for sure. Sure, yeah. But mo- moving on to the Bears, Mitchell Trubisky had a pretty horrible first three quarters, but turned it on and threw three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. I started him in a ballsy move last week in one of my super flex leagues, and I'm actually doing it again. I like this matchup for Mitch. Uh, he's definitely a stay away for one quarterback leagues, but what do you guys think? Am I, am I, am I Super flex at best. Him again? No. <laughs> he, Giants defense is not very good. He's he's worth a super flex, but I wouldn't watch the first three quarters. I'd only watch the fourth quarter. <laughs> hmm. fair, fair enough. And then uh, the backfield, David Montgomery, Tariq Cohen. Montgomery looked pretty good for uh, coming off that groin injury. He seems pretty healthy. All right. How do you feel about these guys? I think this is the best matchup they're going to get all year. Uh, if if you're desperate, obviously play him. But if, if you don't need to, I'd still think about him in the flex. At yeah, least you can use him in the flex if you want. Yeah, because if you drafted Montgomery, this is the best matchup he's going to get all year. There's a very good chance he could finish with two touchdowns or more. Definitely. Uh, moving on to wide receiver, there was some news with Allen Robinson. Apparently pissed off that uh, he hasn't gotten a contract extension. Uh, he also draws the matchup of James Bradbury, so I'm not super stoked about that. In my opinion, it's Anthony Miller this week. You guys agree with me or disagree? I'm going to disagree with you. I think Allen Robinson, he had a bad week last week, and that's why he, uh, he's a little frustrated with himself just as much as the team, and I think he wants to prove that he deserves that contract. Even on Bradbury, huh, that that uh, matchup doesn't scare you? Nope. I would be starting Allen Robinson, too, without even thinking about it. I, I Hopefully they pepper him with targets. They may. But moving on to tight end. He is one of the guys on my tight end stream for this week, Jimmy Graham. 
you can pick on the Bears all you want for the signing in the offseason. I know I did, but they obviously have a plan to use him in the red zone. And to be a top 10 tight end, all you need to do is catch a touchdown, and I think he has a solid chance to do that most weeks. Yeah, Jimmy Graham got targeted a lot in the red zone, but he's very touchdown dependent in my eyes. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, streamer at best for sure. That, that'll do it, guys. Bears are favored by five and a half. I actually don't think they cover, I, but I think they win. I think they win this game 20 to 17. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I think they'll win it too. It's yeah. going to be a close one for sure. Low scoring. I actually think this will be a high scoring game, but the Bears will win it. Okay. Interesting. Moving on it's a sneaky next, high scoring game. Moving on to the next game. The Washington football team at the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals favored by seven. Dwayne Haskins. What are you guys thinking? I wouldn't be starting him. No, don't start him. Agreed. I don't. The running back situation is horrible too. I would avoid all that. Yes, I agree with you there too. Uh, the wide receivers, I don't even like. I mean, I like Terry's talent, but this week Ter- he gets matched up against Patrick Peterson, a healthy Patrick Peterson. Yeah, so I don't even really want anything to do with him either. Yeah, be scared if you do tra- or if you do start him. Yeah, I it's think not gonna be. be you have to def- depend on a big play. The guy to own in this offense this week for me is Logan Thomas. The Cardinals give up are by far the worst defense against tight ends, so I think uh, Lomas Logan Thomas can eat. Yeah, he was a surprise last week, but if anything indicates of last week, he's gonna have a big game this week. Could sure. be a streamer of the week. Uh, I think that covers Washington's offense. Not too impressive. Yeah, I'm uh, more impressed with their defense. Moving on to the Cardinals, yeah. C- talking about that defense, um, Kyler Murray, you think he does okay against that dominant front seven? That's a... T- that's a tough one. I mean, Kyler Murray is, is super fast, but that D-line is... Just they attack the ball like the Steelers do. Yep. Yeah, I'd be scared to start him. Agree. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm staying away from Kyler. I think he's got a decent amount of bust potential this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on to the running back guys. Kenyon Drake, Chase Edmonds. Well, there was a lot of talk about Kenyon Drake being the bell cow, but it didn't really seem like it. Yeah, that was weird. I know, Ike, you're a little higher than on Chase Edmonds than most. I know you're a little bit of a fan. Were you encouraged of what you saw? For sure. I thought he would get, like, literally no touches. I thought Kenyon Drake was going to get it all, but it turns out Chase Edmonds is going to get receiving and running. Weird. Yeah, I think it was just a, a matter of Kenyon Drake just being used so much that I think that Chase Edmonds was the benefactor of just good timing. Yeah, could have been sure. his injury too. Yeah, then yeah. maybe. Yeah, if you drafted Drake as your running back too, you're gonna to be starting him. So mm-hmm. start him this week. But uh, wide receiver core guys, DeAndre Hopkins saw the absurd amount of targets, sixteen of them. Jesus. Christian Christian Kirk was a complete disappointment, and Larry Fitzgerald didn't really do nothing. I think the only guy I want to start in that wide receiver room is Hopkins, right? I agree. Yeah, you, I don't think you're ever taking him out of your lineup unless it's... Kirk is flex at best. I don't even want to do that, man. <laughs> it was so disgusting last week. I know, man. I, very Big letdown for a lot of owners. Who knows? Maybe he has a bounce back week. Maybe. Car- Cardo's favored by seven. I think they win this game. This game, um, But I think Washington covers. Cardinals win 20 to 14. That's funny. I think, uh, I, honestly, I think Washington wins again. Really? <laughs> I think Kyler struggles tremendously, and Washington just has to make a few plays to win the game. There's a good chance the Washington football team wins, but I think it's Cardinals that are going to win. Cool. Jump into the next game. Chiefs at Chargers. Chiefs still favored by eight and a half, even though on the road. Obviously, we can pretty much skip over Mahomes. 
starter, Clyde starter, Tyreek starter, Travis uh, Kelsey starter. Well, you think Tyreek could struggle a little bit? Should we temper expectations because uh, the Chargers secondary is good, man? Uh, it's without Casey Derwin Abel. James now, but, who, uh, how are they going to stop the big play? They got uh, Casey Hayward. No Chris, chance he can keep up with Tyreek Hill. Chris Harris Jr. No, ooh, no. That's even worse. They're slow now, man. Chris Harris is like 33. Yeah, they're, I agree, man. And I'm just saying. Tyreek's going to burn him. It's, I, it's a wrap. Tough defense. It, it's a tough defense, but Tyreek Hill, like, he. He's not wrong. Ike is not wrong. Casey Hayward, as great as a cornerback as he is, he doesn't have the speed to keep up with Tyreek. And Losing Derwin James is huge, man. Actually, this is going to be a game that I think Kelsey is just going to eat because, like you said, Derwin James being out, he was. they drafted Derwin James to cover a tight end like Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, definitely there. But, yeah, I... I'd start most guys in the Chiefs offense. Hey, Sammy Watkins, obviously. Avoid Hardman. Me. Yeah, avoid, avoid Hardman, avoid guys. Avoid Hardman. He, the snaps weren't there for him last week. So, moving on to the Chargers. Tyrod Taylor. Guys, stay away. Yeah. Why? Why would you even start him? It doesn't make sense to me. He's he's going to have to throw the ball. Um. And then No, uh, it's still not going to work out for him. Unfortunately, Austin Eckler with Tyrod Taylor as quarterback doesn't look like he's going to see the targets that he saw with Phillip Rivers. But Joshua Kelly. That's a shame. Like, Joshua Kelly seems like a thing. Yeah. Joshua yeah, it made me Kelly. eat my words. <laughs> you you got to have to keep him on your radar because uh, I, I, I don't think Austin Eckler can handle a for, full workload of a running back. So Joshua Kelly would make a great handcuff. Agreed. And then the who's your guys' favorite pass catcher out of these guys? Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry is definitely my favorite. Uh, he's got the highest floor. He, Tyrod looked his way almost every play, and if he didn't look his way, I actually think Mike Williams is a better play than uh, Keenan Allen this week. I mean, you see, yeah, I'd I would be avoiding Keenan Allen too. Not until he uh, gets a better rapport with Tyrod. He needs a lot of targets to do well, and he just won't get them. Agreed. Chiefs favored by eight and a half, guys. Uh, they handle this game, in my yep. opinion. They uh, win they by 35-14. They probably win by 18 and a half. <laughs> but uh, then jumping to the next game, Ravens at Texans. Ravens minus seven. Lamar Jackson, obvious start. Let's jump right into the, into the running back situation. Well, the shit show of a running back situation. Guys, do you want – and this seems wild to say to me since the running game is so good in Baltimore, but do you want to own either Mark Ingram or J.K. Dobbins? I mean, yeah, you want to own them, but it's it, the, the harder question is do you want to start them? I'd rather own Dobbins than Ingram because Dobbins can take over the backfield at any point this, this year. And he can do it in the pass game and the run game, just like Mark Ingram, too. Yeah, I'd rather have the, have Dobbins as the upside. But, yeah, I'm staying away for both guys, man, if I can, for uh, starting this week anyways. Yeah, I think uh, the Ravens are just going to blow out so many teams that I, I think they just throw running backs in there to see what they got. And then uh, moving on to the wide receivers, guys. Uh, Hollywood. Start them. Yeah. To, I think uh, I'm he's go, good. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I he's fast against this secondary guys. Hollywood could be the wide receiver one this week. I think he could have uh, a big player too that could catapult him. Yeah, easily. And then I uh, go ahead, Mike. Plain, you gonna say something? Uh he's actually getting a lot of the targets this year. So I mean, even if he doesn't get that big play, he has a decent floor. I love it. And then. Um, Mark Andrews, obviously. This is the guy you want. Yeah. Obviously. They're, their best red zone threat, their favorite red zone target, must start. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if the Ravens are in the end zone, it's either Mark Andrews, the running back, or the Lamar running it in. And then uh, jump to the Texans, Deshaun Watson. Guys, are you comfortable starting Deshaun this week? I'm not. Not against this Ravens defense. I mean, it's, it is risky. 
it is risky. It's a tough matchup. But, I mean, even with Deshaun Watson not being that good last week, he still saved his get, saved his week with a rushing touchdown. So you always have that high floor with his rushing game. He's going to have to throw a lot, and I think he'll do better than Baker, so he should get you a decent amount of points, I feel like. Yeah, he, he might be okay. I just uh, – I'd be scared to play him, yeah. though. Proceed with caution. He could mm-hmm. have some bust potential. But, guys, David Johnson looked great last week. You think he could keep it up? <sighs> this, mm. this is a tough matchup. If he's going to score, I think it's going to be a receiving touchdown. Yeah, I mean – I don't he, see him getting many carries No, this game. They're going to be down. Definitely, because their defense is dog shit. It could be a lot like last game. It, it – it reminds me of Nick Chubb a little bit, what he tried to do against the Ravens. I mean, he was good on the ground, but they were down the whole time, so you can't use him on the ground. Yeah, well, Duke Johnson is, uh, is hurting, right, his ankle? Yeah, so I he, don't think he's he, playing. Yeah. He, he might be limited or not playing, so Johnson should see a bell cow work. So if you drafted him, I would, st- I would start him. You start him, but you don't like the matchup. Uh, moving on to wide receiver guys, Will Fuller was obviously the number one target, and then uh, Brandon Cooks there, Randall Cobb. Is Will Fuller still the guy this week, or you think it's somebody else running the ball all over uh, Miami's defense? You think he does it again this week against the Seahawks? No. He'd be <laughs> Bobby Wagner and Jamal Adams, man. Ooh, I'd be scared to do that. Yeah, I don't... could kill him. <laughs> <laughs> they might kill him. I, I yeah, please don't kill him, Bill. I I see the Seahawks getting up in this game early, and I think the only reason Cam ran as much as he did last week was because they were up on the Dolphins. So it's going to force Cam to throw it more. Sure. Um, and then the shit show of the running backs, guys, for the Patriots: hmm. Sony Michelle, James White, Rex Burkhead. I guess if there's one to start, who is it? James White. Yeah, just because he receives way better than Sonny Michelle. But I wouldn't start him as a running back, guys. That's a flex option at best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, no more than a flex. Then uh, wide receivers, Julian Edelman, Nikhil Henry. Or, sorry, Nikhil Henry. Nikhil Harry. Um, Julian Edelman, I think, is a start. What do you guys, what do you guys think of Nikhil Harry's upside this week? Flex play at best. If if he catches that touchdown, and uh, and I mean if he doesn't fumble that touchdown, I th- I think he would have been wide receiver three this week. But I wouldn't go any more than a flex. I, I don't know if Bill Belichick trusts him. Agree. Um, then moving on to tight ends, I think we could pretty much skip over until somebody busts out and shows us something. Yeah, Dan, I'd Ossie, avoid Ossie, it. Dalton Keen, Ryan is a avoid. Um, quarterback for the Seahawks, obviously, Russell Wilson. They let Russ cook last week, man. Blew up against Atlanta. Finally. Yeah, the weirdest uh, part was, is, I mean, they were up the entire game, and he still threw it 35 times. Yeah. <laughs> Tougher matchup this week, but if he drafted Russ, man, I'd feel comfortable starting him. Go with it. Yeah, you're using must start every week at this point. And then moving to the running backs, is a little weird. Chris Carson, Carlos Hyde was a pretty close split. Carlos Hyde actually had more touches. Didn't in expect run any game, of that. But Chris Carson was able to catch two touchdowns through the air. How are you feeling about Carson's upside? I'm scared. Yeah. yeah I am too a little bit, yeah. Because yeah. he's probably not going to get the passing work all the time. No, no chance he gets two touchdowns receiving every time. Yeah, that's not something he's known for, really. Yeah, the one benefit with him in this offense is you knew he was the guy when they ran the ball, and it's looking like Carlos Hyde's the kind of that guy. He would have been nice to sell high on Chris Carson. Definitely. You still, we still might be able to. Yeah. Uh, moving on to wide receiver, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Guys, don't get, fa- don't get fancy here. I know it's a tough matchup for DK. He's probably going to draw Stephon Gilmore, so Lockett will probably have the better day. But still, you're starting DK, right? Yeah, I still would. Tall dude, fast. I don't, I don't know if Stephon Gilmore would be able to keep up with him on a deep route, but we'll be able to see. Uh, I'm excited. 
DK kind of reminds me a little bit of Devontae Parker. And if I remember correctly, Devontae Parker even torched Stephon Gilmore. Just faster. Yep. And then moving on to tight end, you guys cool starting Greg Olson in your lineup? Yeah, I'd start him. He looks like he's the number one tight end in Seattle. He'll get his targets. Russell likes the tight end. Especially in the red zone. Yeah, I, I'm honestly staying away. But uh, Seahawks, I think they're home. I think they, they, they win this game and go at 27-20 Seahawks. Russ Cooks again. Yes, sir. I think Russ Cooks again, uh, but the Patriots cover. Okay, guys, jumping into the final game, Monday Night Football. Uh, Saints minus six at the Raiders, where the Raiders were, will unveil their new beautiful stadium. Drew Brees, pretty good matchup this week. You starting him? I'd start him, but I'd be worried. I mean, yeah, I'd be, I'd be, oh, yeah, he doesn't hesitant have to start him. He doesn't have his number one target out there this week, most likely. And Michael Thomas, he's gonna have a new, I bet you he has a new number one target this week. Jared that was, Cook? That was a joke, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I, was I, actually think think I, actually, I actually think it's Alvin Kamara. I think he's, he's going to eat through the air this week. Yeah. Kamara's going to do good, I have a feeling. Maybe not so much through the rush, but he's going to catch at least eight to ten balls, I feel yeah, like. Eight plus targets this week. Yeah. Kamara. yeah. And which, in all honesty, if he's seen all that work in the passing game, I like uh, Latavius Murray. Yeah, he wouldn't Too be a bad flex foot flex play to be honest yeah hopefully it gets into the end zone but uh michael plant you were talking about mike thomas obviously being out with injury all right do you want to start either of these other wide receivers emmanuel sanders traquan smith anything yeah uh i i can see michael thomas being out for a while with this high ankle sprain those always linger and emmanuel sanders is a proven wide receiver when he got traded to the niners last year he he jumped in right away to that offense and produced so i, I think he's going to be the number one guy for breeze now yeah it makes sense um another number one option who might come out of this is jared cook i wasn't a jared cook fan coming into the season but obviously with mt going down it should open up more targets do you agree Ike? Oh, yeah, I'd be starting Cook now for sure. Yeah, Cook's uh, Cook's got top uh, 15 potential in this offense. Cool. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, let's move on to the the Las Vegas Raiders. They should probably be called the Las Vegas Jacobs. Because <laughs> Jacobs ran that offense last no, week. No, I didn't like it. <laughs> um, I'm avoiding Derek Carr, guys. Tough yep. matchup against the Saints. I think we can all agree on that. LaPlante, you agree as well? Absolutely. And then, uh, all right, LaPlante, I give you 20 seconds to just love on your man, Josh Jacobs. Yep. I don't Go think ahead. I don't think 20 seconds is enough. Uh, he's got a tough matchup this week against the Saints, uh, but look what Ronald Jones did last week. He was able to get out, get some chunk plays, and Josh Jacobs is more talented. So I can see Josh Jacobs at least getting in the end zone once. He's not going to get sure. three touchdowns, but he's you're you're playing Jacobs this week. Agreed. Have to. Got anything to add, Ike? Or can we move on? Move on. All right, wide receivers: Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards, Hunter Renfro. Unfortunately, Edwards was a disappointment last week. Only see a one target. Big time. Um, Henry Ruggs though looked real good, right? Yeah, until he uh, until he banged up that knee. He was he was cooking. I'd be scared to start any of them. Except for Darren Waller, obviously. Agreed. This, this I, is a tough matchup for the Raiders' um, home opener of their new stadium. I will. Go ahead. I, I will say this: as disappointing as Brian Edwards was, he was on the field for every single route, every single play for the Raiders. So at least he's out there running routes. But yeah, disappointing. Yeah. Awesome. Um, but tight end. Ike, you kind of mentioned it. Darren Waller is the only guy I want this week. I agree. This uh, in this offense, so I think that pretty much wraps it up, guys. Uh, we we went through every game, so I think we could pretty much wrap it up. Uh, wrap it up. Let, wrap it up. Let let everyone know where they can find you and find your work. You can find me on Twitter at Ike two one two one. And you can find me at Twitter at, at be like underscore Mike. 
with two eyes. And then you can find me on Twitter at dclemens2222, and you can find all our fantasy football content on the Fantasy Six Pack website. I do the weekly tight end streaming article. Um, Mike Bonney does the injury impact article, and Micah Plant does the weekly trends article. So don't forget to like and subscribe this podcast and to subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can check out all the other awesome podcasts like the Fantasy Edge and the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. We, we really do appreciate those likes. Unfortunately, we're not able to do it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but alrighty, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see Peace. you next week. Good luck in your matchups this week. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have were the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have, and we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other.